I'm a medical scientist. My research focus is on high blood pressure or hypertension. Why? Because elevated blood pressure is the leading cause of death on the planet, or more specifically preventable death, which is what I prefer to focus on. Is hypertension also the leading cause of death in Africa? I think when you view images such as these, we are constantly reminded of the burden of infectious diseases in Africa, whether it's HIV, malaria, tuberculosis, and more recently Ebola. Africa is really, on these World Health Organization uh, world maps, the red continent. Very similar to the next Einstein Forum, red Africa, it's quite uh, applicable here too. But when we view non-communicable diseases, it's quite similar. It's actually quite strikingly similar that the prevalence of raised blood pressure is now also the highest in Africa. If we put this more into the context of time, uh, it is, I should perhaps start first uh, about blood pressure. More than 100 years ago, already Dr. Riva Rocky had this wonderful new innovation of the mercury sphygmum manometer, which really opened the world of cardiovascular risk prediction with brachial blood pressure being used as predicting hypertension, heart disease, uh, stroke and death. Only a few years later, uh, it was Dr. Donison who published a beautiful paper in the prestigious Lancet Journal in 1929, where he took this sigma manometer into Africa and went to a large uh, population, more than a thousand people in Kenya, uh, and he took blood pressures. Uh, it was important also to mention that he specifically said that at the bottom of the slide that it was in a population of natives which are, are living in an area which have probably undergone no appreciable change for many centuries. He did not find a single person with hypertension. Today, we are still using this rather old technology of brachial blood pressures. And using this old technology, we now see that hypertension is the most prevalent from all continents on the African continent, with every second individual older than 25 years having hypertension. So more than half of this audience probably have hypertension. What's keeping me awake at night is not uh, what's going on now, but if you think about the short history of hypertension's increase, what will be the situation in 100 years from now if things just continue along this track? Fortunately, we don't have to rely on brachial blood pressures alone anymore. We have beautiful new technologies, which we are also using in our hypertension clinic in South Africa, where we can look at uh, different forms of uh, vascular function, cardiac function with new technology and even also the microvasculature in the eye to do much more accurate and better risk prediction. One technique that we are using is uh, measuring the arterial elasticity of the blood vessels in the aorta, in the aortic area, but also in other sections of the arterial tree. And it has been shown that this technique is quite accurate in cardiovascular risk prediction for heart attacks and strokes in later life. So these beautiful technologies are worldwide mostly being applied to diseased populations or in the elderly. In Africa, this is a bit too little too late because these people are the end of their lives. And with the poor health systems that we have in Africa, this is not really the ideal intervention because most of these people wouldn't be reached anyway uh, to detect whether they have high blood pressure. The latest research I've shown is the first thousand days of life this critical period, which is really important in establishing future cardiovascular risk, it already starts in the womb and the surroundings and the early exposures of the children during those critical phases are very important. But when you look at pictures such as these of young healthy children, uh, it's difficult to think of them being compromised on a cardiovascular level. In fact, that is exactly what we have shown in a study in South Africa where we have included seven-year-old black and white kids from the same school, same environment. And what we found was that the black children had significantly increased arterial stiffness in all sections of the, uh, of the cardiovascular vascular tree, indicating they have indeed an increased risk of cardiovascular disease in later life. And the question it could be asked, is this form of early vascular aging, uh, is this due to early life exposures or is it due to genetic predisposition? 
We know that on the African continent, people have been exposed for centuries to this environment and have undergone genetic adaptations to really uh, survive in the diff different conditions that we have in other continents. And these adaptations may actually now, in the modern day and age, different environment, exposure to tobacco, alcohol, lifestyle, uh, increase the risk for cardiovascular outcome and do quite the opposite than promoting survival. So if we can understand what is going on during the early phases of life and intervene there, uh, we may have a much better chance to reach larger populations and actually prevent the, the outcome of hypertension and, and cardiovascular disease later on. So what we are doing in South Africa is we're having a large study where we have a normal intensive population, which we follow for a number of years, where some of them develop uh, uh, hypertension or cardiovascular deterioration and others remain healthy. But the question being asked is at baseline, at the beginning of the study, what was the differences, what was the predictors of these different outcomes? So we are of course using this cardiovascular uh, technologies that I showed earlier, but what we try to do is also unlock the beautiful potential of biomarkers. Of course we get this from simple blood or urine samples, and in the past it's been shown that single biomarkers or genomics can be very interesting to use in risk prediction or to just understand the pathophysiological pathways for disease development. Some of these findings have been interesting and some of them have been very disappointing. So what we are doing in the study of large group of normotensive individuals is we are not only using single biomarkers but also multiple biomarkers as well as the omics, genomics, proteomics, metabolomics and integrating these. With integrating this information into a form of uh, precision med medicine, I believe we can make new scientific discoveries as to the physiological underpinnings by also integrating this with the physiological information that we have about these individuals. With this new information, putting together for populations, but also for individuals, we create a form of a biosignature that can be used to understand disease development, but also can be used to know why young black children have this increased risk. And what can we do? How can we initiate early prevention programs that can reach large black populations throughout the continent to prevent or delay the onset of hypertension? Thank you.